Otherwise, it would not match with the Thank you. <laughs> Just waiting for things to get down to a dull roar, that's all. Hello, hello, welcome. Good to see you all here. This is our evening service, our Sunday evening service at New Testament Baptist Church. We're coming at you from Safford, Arizona. and want to welcome everybody, everybody that's in the building here and everybody that's out there online. Welcome. Good to have you. Tell your friends to, to go online and watch us too. Everybody's welcome. Please take your songbooks. Turn to page number nine. Page number nine. Good looking group here tonight. Good looking group. Page nine. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Good singing. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which were then our and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 through the darkness I thee, through the eye of sinful men, thy glory may not see. Holy, thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all I work shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, in three persons, blessed Trinity. Good singing, good singing, everyone. Brother Jerry, would you please open us in prayer this evening? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us all back for the evening service. Amen. Father, thank you for the safety today and Father, there's a couple that could not come tonight. Father, I pray that you might take care of their problems. Father, we ask that you be marvelous as he brings the message tonight, that you will bless and guide him and open all of our hearts to the message. Amen. Father, be with us in this week ahead, that you will be with us in all that we do. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jerry. All right, I hope you didn't lose your place, okay? We were on page nine, hymn number nine. Now we're going to go to hymn number 10. How about that? See how hard I work for you and make things easy for everyone? Number 10. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. The glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of Thy name. 
Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. His music in the sinner's ears, his life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood has veiled for me. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise, ye dumb, your loosened tongues employ. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. Good singing. Pastor, you have right, some Right, very good. By way of announcements tonight, don't go far, Marty. These are okay. going to be real quick. So tomorrow night, Faith Bible Institute starts at 6 o'clock. All right, be here or be square. <laughs> and uh, so I trust that you're planning to come. And uh, if you know anybody that's interested, encourage them. They don't have to be a member of the church. We'd love to have them here. 6 o'clock, normally it will be 6.30, but this week, the first week of the semester, 6 o'clock. So we're hoping to see you there. Obviously, Marvel is going to preach here in just a moment. And the only other announcement that I have is reference... Um, uh, Brisa Cote, of course, she's still coming here. That's the plan. We were going to put her in a double wide a trailer that uh, the uh, um, dailies were making available. However, she is just not sure if she's ready for that. Uh, she's kind of a city gal, and she's not quite sure when the pastor says it's only four miles. In her mind, it's like 400 miles, okay? And and so she just needs to come here and um, um, and and to get used to the place and. And uh, she and and so I, it may be that she eventually gets out there. But all I'm, I said all that to say this: we are stopping any improvements on the property right now. So if you are planning to help, it looks like we're just going to leave things as they are. Um, and uh, and and then at some point down the line, if she decides that uh, that she would indeed like to try that trailer, then then the daily said it would be available. So we will work on that when the time comes. So just so you know, she will be living with. The dailies for a while. Excuse me, the dailies. Oh, okay. I, the cotes. I knew what I meant. So, uh, all right, just so you know that. That's what's going on. So if you're planning to help, if you're planning to give financially, uh, if you already gave and you want your money back, uh, make sure you get with whoever would do that, Jerry. And uh, he'll make sure that you, you get that back. If you uh, I have already given some to... Uh, um, uh, to the Cotes, um, then get it from them, <laughs> as opposed to the church, because you gave it. No, I'm just kidding. But at any rate, uh, so that's that's where that is headed. Continue to pray for Brisa. A lot of, as you can imagine, just a lot of emotional stuff going on, you know, and so it's hard. Um, so pray for her and uh, and uh, uh, pray for Lynn. Uh, Lynn's watching us at home. She better be or she's going to be docked. <laughs> um, I don't know what we're going to dock her yet, but... Uh, um, uh, she's supposed to be home watching us. I'm sure she is. And uh, um, uh, pray for her. This is her last day of quarantine. And she doesn't, she's not sick. She didn't get COVID, no problems, no issues. You know, she only got a temperature once, but that was because Marty, Marty messed with her. And that's, you know, <laughs> everybody's temperature goes up when they're messed with. So, so uh, shame on Marty. No, she's fine. She's going to be good. And so we'll see her at church Wednesday night and th Thursday night. So we're glad to have everybody here, family, friends, uh, folks that are here visiting, and we're glad that you are here. And my daughter and son-in-law are going to sing here in just a moment. So we're glad they're here. So brother, I guess that was longer than I intended to make announcements, but you go ahead. Okay. I hope you did not lose your place because we're going to sing song number 11, same page. See, see how easy I make it for you? Page 11. <laughs> oh, worship the king. Oh, worship the King, all glories above. Oh, gratefully sing His power and His love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilion in splendor and herald in good singing. O tell of his mind, O sing of his grace, whose robe is the head, whose canopy space, his chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form, and dark is his path on the wings of the good singing. 
Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the night. It streams from the hill, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor finally to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Let's do one more. Turn over to page 13. <laughs> you, were, you were expecting number 12. Well, you know what? I'm not familiar with number 12, or, you, or we might have had it. <laughs> number 13, crown him with many crowns. We'll do one, two, five, and six. How does that sound? Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns the music on its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Good singing. Crown him the Son of God, before the worlds began. And ye who tread where he hath drawn, crown him the Son of Man, who every grief hath known, that wrings the human breast, and takes and bears them for his own, that all in him may rest. Number five. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side. Rich wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity. Number six, crown him the Lord of air, one with the master known, one with the spirit to him give from yonder glorious throne. To thee be endless praise, for thou for us hast died. Be thou, O Lord, through endless day, adored and magnified. Great singing. I thank you. Very Master. good. Very good singing. Yep, I enjoyed that. Very, very good singing. All right. So, um, one more quick announcement, and that is, um, all of you remember that uh, we announced this morning the tragedy out in Bylas last night, yesterday, Randy Titla's house and uh, his daughter's house, and a lot of the property there was destroyed by fire. Um, we, uh, we sent uh, the girls over to Walmart. The church paid for this. Uh, we got a bunch of clothes uh, for school, Edward, for the school and some shoes and some school supplies that were lost, burned up in the fire. We spent about $132 on that. And uh, so if you would like to help offset any of that, it would be helpful. I've had a couple of people already say that they, they chip into that end. And so um, just so you know um, that that money has been spent and uh, um, uh, if you'd like to care to, to uh, we just wanted to be a blessing to the family. If there's any more needs that we hear of, and, and obviously there's just uh, it's a tragedy. It's just a, you can imagine. And, and half of the tragedy is not even known yet. How many of you have ever not realized you lost something until six weeks or, or six months later, and then you realize, oh, that picture is gone or this is gone. And so, I mean, cell phones were lost, IDs were lost, everything's got to be replaced. And of course it all costs money. So um, just continue to pray for the family and for that situation. Glad to have our, our daughter and son-in-law with us. We, uh, um, uh, they are busy at Sun and Shield Baptist Church, very busy. He's the uh, Sunday school superintendent over there, and 
they both sing in the choir, and, and uh, so we're glad that they're with us tonight. Uh, we asked if they would sing before, uh, uh, before Mar Marvelous comes to preach. Um, uh, we we kind of, we, we, we picked up their daughter, and we said, if you ever want to see her again, you're going to have to come get her. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so they decided, okay, I better come get her, because they want to see her again. And so anyway, they came, they came back today to pick her up, so we're glad that they're here, and, and uh, we look forward to all the time that we can spend with her. And uh, so you guys come. This is Christy and Lee Van Winkle. I think of the day I met Jesus, he gave me a reason to sing. For everything changed in a moment, how I praise him, my Savior and King. Oh, everything changed in a moment of time, the emptiness vanished away. My burden fell off at the foot of the cross. Yes, everything changed on that day. My sin was forgiven, my guilt was all gone, transformed by His power divine. The light of eternity started to shine. When everything changed in a moment, moment of time. The door is still open to heaven, the Lord will forgive you today. Receive his free gift of salvation. He will take all your burdens away. Oh, everything changed in a moment of time. The emptiness vanished away. My burden fell off at the foot of the cross. Yes, everything changed on that day. My sin was forgiven, my guilt was all gone, transformed by His power divine. The light of eternity started to shine when everything changed in a moment, moment of time. Everything changed. In a moment of time. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate that. All right, very good. We are very pleased to have with us tonight, in the last Sunday before he heads back to school, Marvelous Rustin. Marvelous has been very faithful, and um, he, is, uh, he loves the Lord. Been a student at the Ambassador Baptist College, and uh, he is headed back on Wednesday. So... Wednesday morning, bright and early, they're headed to Phoenix, and so you pray for him as, uh, as he heads back. But before he goes, he's going to preach for us tonight. He's a senior, an ambassador this year, and uh, maybe he'll talk a little bit about what's going on in his life, but uh, you listen to him. So glad that uh, um, you're here. You're listening online, many of you, I'm sure, from Bylas. Uh, those that were able to make it, we're glad that you're here. And you just pray for, for Marvelous tonight. I don't know if he's nervous. He shouldn't be nervous. He's family, and uh, we love him. And uh, um, we, we, we love him to death, Marvelous. You come and you preach what God has laid on your heart, brother. Thank you so much. All right. Good evening. And I'm so glad that you guys can be here tonight. And tonight I'm going to start off in a book entitled Captured by Grace by David Jeremiah. I'm going to read from the book and then we're going to enter the passage. So in the book, chapter 3, it says, as Jesus sat down to teach, his eyes swept across the hodgepodge of humanity that was eagerly gathering around him. As usual, it was neither the community's best nor its brightest who sought his wisdom today. Tax profiteers were here. Pleasure seekers were here. It was, the re it was a representative assortment of the unwashed masses dismiss dismissively referred to as sinners. The religious leaders took their usual posts on the peripheral of the crowd, strategic placement for murmuring and whispering, causatic commentary, and also for avoiding dreaded physical contact with the ceremonially impure. Then the world seemed to grow silent as the master began to teach, or rather to tell stories. The rabbi loved good narratives, long ones, short ones. This time he delivered his tales in a matching set three variations on a theme, the subject might have been described as lost and found. And that's the title of tonight's message, A Lost and Found Love. 
We're going to be in Luke 15, Luke 15, Luke 15, chapter, I'm going to start reading in verse 1. And the word of God says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with him. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he lay, layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either which woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek it diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So tonight, I want you guys to see that you must let go of your pride and give this gospel to everyone with a lost and found love. You must let go of your pride and give this gospel to everyone with a lost and found love. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Holy Father, I thank you for t today and the opportunity to worship in your house. And I ask that you would just help people and help them to gain a clear understanding of the scriptures here. And I ask that you would just use your Holy Spirit to convict them and to make an application to their lives and that you would use me, Father, and I ask that you would just uh, call my spirit and, Lord, help me to preach how you would have me to preach, and I ask that you would increase and that I would decrease at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So we look at Luke chapter 15, and Luke chapter 15 is one of the Bible's most mostly known known chapters, and it is the parable of the prodigal son. That is why this passage is famous, because it's about the prodigal son. But we so often overlook the first 10 verses of the chapter. But in this short introduction to the prodigal son, it offers us a pretext on love, and not just any kind of love, but a lost and love, a lost and found love. And so tonight we're going to look at a lost and found love. So let's go back to verse number one. And the verse says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and the sinners for to hear him. So first we see a lost and found love accepts the rejects of society. A lost and found love re accepts the rejects of, re of society. Everyone is called to restoration with God. Christ's purpose was to deliver from sin and restore our relationship with God. Everyone is involved in salvation. And that includes the publicans. The publicans. The publicans was a tax gatherer, a collector of taxes or tolls. And one employed by a publican, our farmer general, and collection of taxes. The tax collectors were, as a class, detested not only by the Jews, but by other nations, also both on account of their employment and of the harshness, greed, and deception with which they did their jobs. Think of it as the American government today and its politicians. A lot of people do not like them. You think of President Trump, uh, Pence, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, a lot of people don't like the politicians. And everyone in Jesus' day did not like the publicans. But they were included in salvation. And that also includes the sinner. The sinners were devoted to sin, specifically of men stained with certain definite vices or crimes. They would be considered not free from sin. 
So everyone despised the sinners in the Jewish culture. And think of it in America today as the homeless person, the drunk, the drug dealer, the criminal. Those were the people that were hated in Jesus' time. Someone once said, we can love someone with unconditional love. However, that is not to mean their actions have unconditional approval. And the point is not to love everyone just as they are in sin, but to see everyone on an equal level. We are all sinners. Billy Graham once said, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. And Jesus Christ, while on this earth, saw everyone equally. He did not have a public popularity system like the Jewish people had. The Jewish religion had a popularity system where they had high ranks. But Jesus Christ did not see that with the publicans or the sinners. Instead, he saw them all as sinners and equal. And he fellowshiped with them. So a lost and found love accepts the rejects of society. And secondly, we see that a lost and found love rebukes false religion. Let's look at verse 2. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, A lost and found love rebukes the false religion. The religion of Christ's day sees that the individual can follow the law of Moses in obedience to God. We see the Pharisees. The Pharisees called themselves the separate ones. They were the most influential and largest sect who were strict rule followers, who sought distinction and praise by outward observance of external rites and piety, meaning they would pray in public, or they would wash someone's feet in public, they would do things publicly so that they can gain praise from humans. And we see the scribes. The scribes were men learned in the Mosaic law and in the sacred writing, an interpreter, teacher. Scribes examined the more difficult and subtle questions of the law, added to the Mosaic law, decisions of various kinds thought to elucidate its meaning and scope, and did this to detriment of religion. So the Pharisees and scribes, they were more about the law than the person breaking the law. But when we look at Christ, Christ was more about the people than the law being broken. And the religion of America today is probably becoming less and less and more less Christian and more like the Pharisees and scribes. An article by the Christian Post says, over half of U.S. Christians believe good works will get them into heaven. A study. 52% say they are work-oriented, meaning that works will get them to heaven. And 46% trust Christ. Confession by sin will get them to heaven. 52% said works, and 46% it's trusting in Christ alone. It was 2,000 adults, 18 and over, that took the survey. And the survey also corroborated a previous report released by the Barna Group, an American Bible Society, which found that scripture engagement is on decline, with the U.S. adults who say they read the Bible dropping from 14% to 9% between early 2019 and 2020. And many Christians today are prideful because they just call themselves Christians, when in reality they need to seek out a relationship with God and trust Him as their Savior. It was actually a couple weeks ago, I was at Dunkin' Donuts with a couple of my friends and I really love Dunkin' Donuts, and we go to Dunkin' Donuts to take a break from the busy college life. And while at Dunkin', we uh, were waiting in line, and we got our coffee, sat down, 
we had this great conversation about books. And in this conversation about books came up the topics of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And we were discussing which books were better. And we came to the conclusion, or the guys came to the conclusion, that book, the books were better than the movies. And in the middle of our conversation, this lady comes up to us and she interrupts our conversation. And I look up at her and she looks, actually, she looked not, not really good. She was really skinny. Her hair was really messy. And she looked like she was on drugs, speaking and shaking uncontrollably. And she took out her knife and put it towards one of my friends and said, look at this knife. I just bought it at Walmart. And my friend is sitting there. She says, touch it. And he's like that, touching the knife. And he says, wow, that's a really sharp knife. And while I was sitting there, in my mind, I was thinking, man, why did this lady have to interrupt such a great conversation? Why can't she go interrupt the other people on the other side of Duncan? When we're having this great conversation, why can't she just go to the other people instead of bothering us? And instead of seeing it as an opportunity to give the gospel, I saw it as a, it was an opportunity for me to be prideful, just like the Pharisees and scribes were in Jesus' day. They had a popularity system with, with themselves. And I should have saw that as an opportunity to give the gospel. And at that moment, I was looking more towards myself than I was looking at the person and their condition as a sinner. So, Christian, how about you? Are you more concerned about your constitutional rights than you are about a sinner and a lost soul? Are you more concerned about politics than saving the lost soul? We as Christians must get our priorities right and focus on things that are eternal and things that are above. Because what matters most is the lost soul, the individual, the one person who is dying and going to hell. So, the Pharisees and scribes are more about the law than people, and they see that the individual can follow the law of Moses in obedience to God. Do we need to correct our priorities, Christians? So, a lost found... A lost and found love rebukes false religion. And thirdly, we see a lost and found love shows compassion on the lost. Verses 4 and 8. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Verse 8. Either... That what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. So, a lost and found love shows compassion on the lost. And Christ is giving a parable here. And Christ, the parable, a parable is an example by which a doctrine or precept is illustrated. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It's an example by which a doctrine or precept is illustrated, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Christ is giving a parable, and this parable is directed towards the Pharisees and scribes because they were murmuring about Christ being with sinners and publicans. And in these parables, it shows us two things, that how we can show compassion on the lost, and that is through noticing the lost one. And Jesus uses Jewish culture to convict and show the importance of compassion on the lost soul. He uses the parable of the sheep and the shepherd. In A.W. Tozer's book, No Greater Love, Experiencing the Heart of Jesus, through the Gospel of John, he writes, The shepherd and his sheep is a lovely picture of Christ and his followers. It certainly is one of the most popular and best understood analogies in the Bible, even among those of us not familiar with raising sheep. 
In biblical times, the relationship of the shepherd to his sheep was personal. Today's shepherd does not know his sheep this way. He might stand on a knoll somewhere overlooking his great flock of sheep, but he sees them only as an undulating white surface. He knows the sheep are his. He knows their size and how much profit they will bring him, but he does not know them personally. To him, shepherding is simple, a commercial proposition. This was not so with David. He didn't have many sheep, but he knew them all personally. In turn, they stayed by their shepherd, confident in his affection and protection. As for today's shepherd, his sheep have no confidence in him. They do not even know he exists. If he come into the herd and yell at them, they would all run. The ancient shepherd knew his shepherd from the time they were born. When they were astray, he caught them and carried them back on his shoulders. It was warm. It was a warm personal relationship. That is the beauty of Christianity. It is that faith that brings us into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. As the old hymn by as Eliza Herwalt says, My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. If we believe in something but did not know who said it, nor what, where it came from or how it came to be, we would have a cold, heartless, mechanical religion. The person who turns from unbelief to this kind of religion is exchanging a chain of iron for a chain of gold, but is a chain nevertheless, and it binds him as surely as a chain of iron bound him. However, the man who has Jesus Christ lays aside all chains and is not bound at all. It is a personal religion, belief in the person of Jesus Christ our Lord. The person and the presence, these two wonderful truths make the Christian life what it really is. So, through noticing the lost one, and then through seeking diligently the lost one, um, it was at college, and I w we have a busy schedule at college, so the schedule makes me wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I walk to school for classes at 7 o'clock in the morning. And when it's a busy day and I forget stuff, and sometimes I do, I get ready all ready for class, and I go and get my backpack, I have everything ready, and I leave my phone in my dorm. And I take my backpack, and I go to class. So I'm going to class, and I sit in my classroom and I don't know where my phone's at so I look for my phone because I love my phone and I can't live without it so I look for my mo phone check everywhere check in my check in my bag see where my phone is at and I realize that my phone is lost so I realize my phone is lost I go and look for it and search for my phone because I really like my phone and my phone has most of my life on it. And so I go and look for my phone, and I'm really worried. I'm searching everywhere because it's an expensive phone. It's a way I get in contact with people back home. And so I search for my phone everywhere, and I'm worried about it. And I desire my phone. So I go and search for my phone diligently and because I love my phone. And I search everywhere on campus. I check, I check the gym. I check the cafeteria. I check the classroom I was in last period. And so I do all that on campus, and I think it's in, it's in my dorms. So I walked back to my dorms really quickly before work, which starts at 2, to get my phone. And so I take the five to six minute walk back to my dorms because I love my phone and I'm seeking out my phone and I'm searching for my phone. And so I go back to the dorms, look for my phone, and I found my phone. It was lost, but now it's found because I searched diligently for it. And I have that connection with my phone now and my relationship with my phone is restored. And that 
illustration shows us a lost and found love. And that was the point that Jesus was trying to get across with how God sees the sinner in searching for the lost one. The one that is lost, he went out and searched for it. And that is the point that Christ is getting across to these Pharisees and scribes with this parable. So a lost and found love shows compassion on the lost. And lastly, we see a lost and found love is complete over redemption. Verses, actually verses 4 and 8 display that for us. And that is through finding the lost one and through the lost and through the ones already through the ones already found rejoicing. You see that the angels rejoiced in heaven over the one sinner that repented. And it reminds me of the time when we were in college where we play softball and we play we don't play against other colleges, but we play against each other in college. And so our team made it all the way to the championship game. And I can remember the last score that brought in the run, and we, we celebrated that. We were jumping up, hollering, and jumping up and down because we won softball championship. And we rejoiced because we won something. But in reality, what we won was of earthly value. And when one soul comes to Jesus Christ and trusts Him as Savior, they, that is an eternal value, and it can never be lost once it's found. So today we looked at a lost and found love, a lost and found love accepts the rejects of society, a lost and found love rebukes false religion, a lost and found love shows compassion, and a lost and found love is complete over redemption. And the book, Captured by Grace, it continues to say, first, there was a quick glimpse of a shepherd climbing, combing the rugged hills for a lost sheep even to the point of neglecting 99 others. Everyone could visualize the shepherd triumphantly bearing the bleeding, bleating prize across his shoulders as his, friend applauded. his friends applauded. He Heaven, Jesus said, is something like those applauding shepherds. End of story. Then he talked about a lost coin. This time, the searcher was a frantic housekeeper shaking every chair and pitcher to find the coin. Finally, with a little shriek of delight, the woman held high her prize. Like the shepherd, she couldn't help but call her friends and throw a party. There was a dash of humor in the story, and the crowd laughed appreci appreciatively. The angels, Jesus said, have such celebrations with even one sinner has a change of heart. What must the Pharisees and the scribes have made of all this? Shepherds and coins and clapping. What did misplaced possessions have to do with the law of Moses? Purity. That was the issue according to their law. The only valid question was whether the shepherd or woman were legally holy. But Jesus wasn't finished for the day. He brought out the main course to which the preceding dishes were mere appetizers. He told a story for the ages one that echoes through, through history, that disarms every hearer that no one ever tries of retelling. It is a story that loses nothing in any culture or setting. No matter where it is shared, Charles Dickens, the greatest of novelists in the English language, called it this, the greatest story of all time. And Christ would go on to give the, product, the parable of the prodigal son. But today we looked at the prequel to the prodigal son, a lost and found love.
And a lost and found love is found in Jesus Christ. And when you understand that, you will have eternal life. And the Bible teaches that you can know for sure that you can go to heaven. But first, you must learn these three Bible truths that all people are sinners. The Bible teaches, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Every person is naturally a sinner and falls far short of God's perfection. Secondly, God must punish our sin. The Bible teaches, for the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 Our sin has separated us from God. And if we die in this condition, we will certainly experience the eternal judgment of God in hell and the lake of fire. But lastly, Christ died for our sins. The Bible teaches, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. So Jesus Christ, God's Son, came to earth and voluntarily died for us taking the penalty of our sins. Jesus died shedding his blood to cleanse us from our sins. He was buried but arose from the dead three days and three nights, proving that he is God. He conquered death so we would never have to experience eternal death. So a lost and found love is found in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. But now the question is, Will you accept what Jesus Christ did for you? The Bible teaches, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 3.36 So knowing you are a sinner, deserving God's punishment, and understanding that Jesus Christ died for your sins, you must trust in, rely upon Christ to save you from your sin and give you eternal life. If you agree with what God has said, decide right now to trust in Jesus Christ exclusively to be your Savior. If this is your decision, simply tell this to, to God right now. Believe in Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. That, though, that is for those of you who have, haven't trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior. But Christian, you must let go of your pride and give this gospel to everyone with a lost and found love. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to preach, and I ask that you would just help each Christian here um, Father, probably more than likely, most of us in here are failing you at Christianity. Probably more than likely, God, most of us don't read our Bibles every day. And more than likely, God, we don't build a relationship with you every day like we should. And God, I ask that you would help us to build that personal relationship with you and convict our hearts to make the decision to move forward in that and to give out the gospel to the world uh, because you have a lost and found love for the sinner. And thank you again, and I ask that you would just help each Christian here and convict their heart. In, in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
just a moment. I'm going to ask Rachel to start to play again, but I just want to talk to you for a second. Um, if your heads are bowed, you can leave them bowed. They don't have to be, but I just want to encourage you. First of all, what Marvelous preached tonight, he preached, and it speaks to every one of our hearts in here. Sometimes we get this idea that, you know, well, the gospel is some, it's, it's, it's for them or it's for that group. Listen, the gospel started in Jerusalem, and it went through Jerusalem, and, and it went up into Turkey, and it went into Europe, and it went around the world to the west. It also went into Persia and into Russia, and it came around the world to the east. The gospel has been preached to every culture. God is not trying to change our cultures. He is trying to save us from hell. So we live in different cultures, don't we? I was in the military. Um, um, we, we went to, to a church, uh, a couple of different churches that had multiple different uh, races and people involved. I mean, in any military work, even though we were in Spain, we had Koreans in that church and we had Japanese folks in that church and, and we had Filipinos in that church. In other words, the thing that was the common denominator was that we were all born again by the power of God. Amen. What Marvelous preaches as a Native American applies to me as a white guy just as much as it does to anybody else. The same thing is true when a white guy might go to Bilas and preach, he has the same authority in, to them. And it's not a, it's a, it's not a white, it's not a, it, it's not a Native American thing. It is a gospel thing. It is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God into salvation. Now, Marvelous stands up here and he preaches, and man, I am just so thankful to see the maturity in this young man. I am so thankful to see that he has the support of his mom and dad and his sister in particular. I am so glad that he's here tonight. I'm glad that his brother came tonight. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. This is, this is really, th th this is good, but listen, we are, you're not saved because your dad's a, a preacher, or your mom's a preacher, or your brother's a preacher, or your, or, or your son's a preacher. You are only saved when you trust Christ as your personal Savior. Okay, you've got to, it, it's, it's not just a matter of knowing in your head the facts that Jesus died. That's not what we mean when we say, well, you have to believe on Jesus. No, we have to realize how ugly our sin is. We have to look at the end of alcoholism. We have to look at the end of adultery. We have to look at the end of, of, of uh, uh, habits that, that, that destroy us. We have to look at the end of all that. And we have to say as ugly as that is and as horrible as that is and in illegal drugs and how they destroy our families and destroy our homes, that's where that takes me. Yet at the end of all that, God loved us so much that he's willing to go out after us and put us over his shoulders and carry us home, just like that lost lamb. Listen, that woman, that woman that lost that coin, was, it was in the house. You know, there are some people that live in our houses that are lost. They live in our families, and we just, all we, we listen, we need to struggle. We need to realize our, our responsibility is to love them to the point that we tell them the truth. And our prayer is that they understand that, listen, we're not trying to, we're not trying to sound better. We are concerned about your soul. God loves you so very much. Marvelous is concerned about souls. His heart is, is easy to see. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, I mean, uh, that, that illustration was a hard one. To admit that, you know, you were concerned about how that gal looked and Man, I was so glad you didn't stick the neck, stick that knife in somebody's neck, man. I was like, man, I don't. To be honest, I was thinking the same thing. And then he said, you shouldn't think that. I went, oh, oh well, that's that's too. Then I had a bad attitude, you know. That's that was my first thought was too. Hey, but isn't that I'm so I, that's special when somebody can be transparent. I, I'm so glad that uh, I'm so glad that uh, we serve a God who changes our hearts. And whether we are red or yellow, black or white, Jesus loves the little children. 
Jesus loves the little Indians. I get all those wrong. I get them in the wrong order. But, but uh, he loves all the different tribes as well. And I am so glad. I am so glad that God promises that people are going to be saved out of every tribe and kindred and tongue. But to be saved doesn't mean you've heard the truth and you say, yeah, I acknowledge that. That sounds good. No, you need to be born again. You need to be at the place where your heart is broken because you realize what a disaster sin has been. And that you cannot fix that by yourself. You have tried, and every time you try, it works for three months or it works for six months, and and then then it fails miserably, and that's because you are doing it. We have to all, every single one of us, has to get to the place where we realize, I can't do it. God, God, will you, will you forgive me? Come into my heart and save me. What a privilege it would be to share the gospel with anyone tonight that might be questioning where they are. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this night. We thank you, Lord, for the words that were spoken because they were your words. We're thankful, Lord, the authority that Marvelous had tonight as he preached was an authority, Lord, that came from God. We're thankful, Lord, that uh, he can, can, uh, uh, Lord, we see him studying and we see him um, doing, uh, making every effort, Lord, to, to follow uh, his, his pastor is not a very good example. I, I, I don't do it like I learned how to do it. I, I hear him tell us what he's going to say, and then he tells us, and then he, then he tells us what he told us. And, and, and that's what they teach him in Bible school, and that's exactly what he did tonight. And, and, and he did a good job. And, and Lord, I'm not the example that I ought to be, I suppose, as far as just putting together a sermon. But I'm so thankful that he is, he is Lord, trusting you. I ask and pray that you bless his family, bless his home, his mom and dad. And Lord, uh, I pray that you bless his uncle, Randy Titler, in that situation, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would, uh, Lord, provide for them and help us as a church to try to be a blessing to that family. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your grace. And we ask and pray, Lord, that, um, that you would help us this week as we move forward. Give a marvelous and safe trip back to school. And Lord, we ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you. All right. Don't forget Faith Bible Institute tomorrow night, um, six o'clock and then six thirty on Wednesday night. We got the Bible study going on here. If you care to join us, you're always welcome to do that.